our ability to ask, our ability to think is less than what God can actually do. According to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. When we're waiting on God, praying, desiring for things, painting these scenarios that we imagine God could do, what you can ask for, the, the limitations of your asking ability and the limitations of your imagination are far beneath what God can actually do. God can do and is able to do and often is willing to do far more than what we can ask or think because what he can do is according to his infinite power. Now the context here is that God would essentially lead his people into the fullness of himself being to know the love of Christ. It, it's, it's, a, it's a, quite the, the feat to try and know the love of Christ on a purely human level. Meaning my brain on its own is not capable of understanding the depths of the riches of God's love for me. So there's a spiritual element that's required. I need spiritual insight. I need spiritual understanding. I need the, the help of God's spirit. And so what God does is he enables people to know the love that they want to know. When you say, God, I want to know your love. Well, God makes that possible by his own divine power. And it's especially helpful to know that God leads us into his fullness. He fills us with the fullness of himself that we might know his love. Now, that's the context here, but the point still stands, the principle that what God can do and what, you, what God is able to do in your life is according to his infinite power. And, and my mind can't conceive of his infinite power. I don't know how to ask according to his infinite power. I can't imagine what his infinite power looks like because it's infinite, it's endless. It goes on and on and on and there's no cap. So even when you ask or believe or wait for God to do something and you paint this scenario in mind of what it's gonna look like, often that is still less than what God actually can do and what he intends to do in your life. Some of you guys get super discouraged waiting on God. I know I, know I do. We get super discouraged waiting on the Lord and you go for so long without seeing any progress, without seeing any kind of results that you eventually just go, you know what? Maybe you kind of pull up an Abraham and Sarah and you settle for what you can do instead of waiting for what only God can. And you settle for what other people in your life can do for you. Instead of looking to God, you start turning to people. And you go, well, maybe I'm supposed to start doing stuff. And you start getting people involved. And you start reasoning on a purely human level. And you stop evaluating things through the lens of scripture. And you stop trusting that God can do the impossible. And you settle for what only man can do. Which is a cheap counterfeit of what God intends to do. So people set, settle for cheap counterfeits all the time. It's a lesser version of what God intends to do, but we get, we get you know, complacent or we get tired of waiting and we get confused and discouraged and we move on to, and we just go, you know what? I'm just gonna get men involved. I'm gonna do this myself. Just like Abraham and Sarah, we're waiting for a son, nothing's happening, so let's try and make this happen on our own. Let's try and get Hagar, the Egyptian servant involved and maybe she'll produce a, a child for Abraham. That's not what God intended, but they settled for what they could produce by their own hands instead of waiting for what only God could do by his. And so my encouragement moving forward is this, don't, don't settle for what your own hands can produce without God's favor on it. This doesn't mean I'll never have a, a part to play in God doing things in my life. I, I do have a, a role to play. I say this all the time, we have a responsibility. I participate with God in his plans, in what he's doing in my life and in the world. I participate, I have a role. But don't settle for what only you can do. Because if you do, often God's favor isn't on that. It's just to go, I'm gonna do this myself. I'm gonna forget what God's word says. I'm just gonna go against what he's, I know his character is. I'm gonna compromise my values in the process. And I'm just gonna move forward without really acknowledging him in all my ways. Don't do that. Because to achieve results, or to get something without God's favor on it, it's gonna be more of a burden to you than a gift. And so my encouragement moving forward is, is know that God will include people in his plans. Some people in your life, in your church, in your community, in your family, they'll play a role in like being a part of what God wants to do in your life. They'll play a role in that. But don't settle for what only people can do. And look to people and hope in people and trust in people when, when God wants to do something in your life that frankly no man can claim credit for. Don't trust in your plans. Don't trust in your ability. Don't trust in your efforts and your gifts and your resources and your experience. These aren't reasons that you're successful. 
These things aren't reasons that you'll see good results. They're a part of what God does in your life, but they're not the ultimate reason why you see things happen. These aren't good reasons for confidence. My ability, my hope, my resources, my, my connections, my ability to know people and, and, and manipulate and strategize, that's not something I should hope in. Rather, God in his limitless power, God in his infinite divine ability, that's the source of my confidence. And that's something that frankly, even when I do play a role in what God is doing and people are part of it, I, I can't take credit and no one else can because we know God did what I didn't even know to ask for or know to imagine. And so just know that your imagination has some very strong limitations. And we hold God hostage to the scenario of I'm waiting for this and it's going to look like this and it'll happen here and it'll happen this time and I'll be this old. And we paint this scenario when what we're waiting for is actually less than what God intends to do. Or maybe some of it is true, but a lot of it needs to be flushed out and realigned with his actual will. So just know that what you think you're waiting for isn't always what God intends to actually do. Moving forward, when we're talking about waiting for the impossible, um, just a few questions to ask. Do you know the difference, if you think about it, do you know the difference between waiting for man versus waiting for God? Do you know the, how to discern if you're doing either of those? Do you know how to recognize in your own life, hey, am I looking and trusting and hoping in people or am I looking to and trusting in God, tr knowing that he'll involve people, but ultimately they're not my source of confidence. Do you know how to discern that? Are you able to discern when you're waiting on what only man can do versus what only God can do? And so hopefully by the end of this, you'll know how to discern in your own life because I don't just want to give you like, here's how to recognize, here's how to, I want you to be able to, for the rest of your life, know when you start to gravitate toward trusting in man instead of God, when you start to allow people and their money and their, you know, abilities and their experience, when you let that trump God uh, to help you recognize when you start to trust in men instead of God, I, I want to help you do that. So some of you don't know it, and I, I'm in the same boat, man. We don't often recognize when we're, tr when we're trusting more in people than God. And when we start to like let people rise above God in our list of priorities, and then somehow he's beneath them and he takes less of a priority, we, we, don't even, we don't often know when we're doing that. Some of you are trusting in people, but you're calling, you're calling it waiting on the Lord. You know, I'm, I'm waiting on God, but you're, you're trusting in all your connections. You're trusting in all the backup plans you've made. You're trusting in the people you know who can get you out of this problem if things go wrong. You're trusting in what really people can do for you or what you can do for yourself instead of going, Lord, I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna trust that what you have in mind for me, my family, my wife, whatever it is, that what you have in mind is frankly impossible for any person to do. No one else can do it except you. I'm waiting for that. I'm not gonna settle for a lesser version of what you have for me. And so my first point of encouragement is this, and I've said it over and over, but I'm gonna back it with scripture now, okay? There's a lot of scriptures that speak to this. Don't make men or women, or just mankind, your ultimate trust. Wait for God instead of people. Because trust me, God's help is better than man's. Uh, sometimes, let me paint a scenario. Sometimes when you wait on the Lord, sometimes there will be this temptation to start moving things forward on your own. And the enemy will sneak in, kind of like, you know, think of Genesis chapter three, when Adam and Eve are like, we can't eat from the forbidden tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the serpent goes, ah, maybe you can. In fact, God knows that you'll be like him if you eat it. So you can either take this into your own hands or wait for God to do something or maybe never eat from the tree and maybe never have the knowledge he has. And, or you can just take it for yourself. And so that temptation gets to Eve, right? She ends up taking and seizing. Uh, what we don't know if God would have ever given them, which is knowledge the way he has it, they end up not knowing good and evil the way he does. They know it in a different way. 